What's up, everybody? Excited to be here again uh, doing another interview. Before we start, if you guys want to be interviewed or you know anybody, then just do a link in the description. And I'm realizing that it's not the best for me to just call these interviews because they could be anything, really. What, what I want is to be able to interview individuals and get to know a sense of how they got to where they are, and then after that initial conversation where we've kind of introduced them, then I'm very open to having talks about specific subjects, anything really. Um, I really want to take advantage of this concept of there's this link in the description, and anybody in the world can schedule time with me that will get published to YouTube talking about something. So I have no idea what these things will be about. Mm -hmm. All right, man. How you doing, Sean? Um, excellent, man. Good, good to be here. Um... I've, uh, I I think this is one thing I've always uh, thought about doing. I've always seen your videos, and I was like, yeah, um, I think this call is going to be a great call. Just trying to get some valuable information out to the audience. So I'm excited to be here. Awesome, man. That's that, that's good to hear. So so where are you from? Where do you uh, reside? I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, yeah, Atlanta, Georgia. So the mecca of everything right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like peaches? Georgia's known for peaches, right? Yeah, Georgia's known for peaches. I'm not really a peach person. Uh, I mean, once in a while, I guess. I don't know. It's never really been a, not really one of my top fruit, but yeah. But I mean, I guess I'm in uh, Georgia, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so have you have you been there for a long time or moved there recently? What's your what's your story? Yeah. So um, I came to um, I'm a religion originally from New York. Um, I came to Atlanta. Um, I've been in Atlanta for over like maybe 10, 15 years now. Um, I love Atlanta. Um, I really just got really acclimated to like just the lifestyle of Atlanta. It's just a lot more different than, you know, New York. It's a lot, New York's a lot, a lot more faster. Um, yeah. Atlanta has kind of like the balance of, of both. I guess you have both those dualities um, in Atlanta a little bit more. So if I want to go to the city, um, I, currently I'm, I am in the city, but sometimes if you, if I want to go to the city and just, you know, um, um, just socialize in the, uh, in the city, or if you want to go to the suburbs and just kind of like to see, get a little, a little more quiet uh, peace, uh, I'm able to do that in Atlanta. So, yeah. So you have access to both, which is good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so how long were you in New York before you left? Um, I, I, you know, I rarely remember. Um, <laughs> um, maybe around like eight or nine. Okay, gotcha. um, So, so you were pretty young. Yeah, pretty super young, super young. <laughs> yeah. I've never been, I've only been to New York like once or twice. I did have a manager oh, yeah? from New York. And it was funny oh, yeah? because he was very, uh, like it was a very professional company. Very like, mm -hmm. you know, dress properly, talk properly. And this manager, yeah. uh, he, he used the word motherfucker like, like it meant brother. Like ev ev oh, every yeah. other sentence, he yeah. was like, this motherfucker. And it was uh, great because he would wear wow. a suit. Be yeah, old business yeah, professional, but talk like a New Yorker. Uh huh. Yeah, man. New York is it's um it's completely different. Just like the society, just in general, just the people. Um, in in New York, it's more of a fast pace. Um, I'm I'm a little more relaxed. I'm a little more passive. Um, and, and you know sometimes that's a that's sometimes a benefit, and and um um it also could be not a benefit sometimes. Yeah, it but depends. yeah different yeah man um everybody's in the rush to get get somewhere do something it, it's cool sometimes because um you know I, I frequently go to new york um i haven't been in a, in the quality wilds um right but um but I, sometimes it's good to kind of go, go to new york and get that energy because you see everybody's such in the mood um then you come back to atlanta and you still kind of have that is that 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 energy from from new york so i, yeah. I love just go to new york and kind of get that vibe it's um it's it's you know it's no city like it definitely yeah that's pretty cool so so yeah. most of your life then has been in atlanta after moving right correct yeah what was so, and do you do you remember much about moving as a kid like what why why did you guys move um i just think my parents just wanted uh, a different opportunity um um you know, my parents are entrepreneurs as well too. Um, so a lot of that, the, the um, structure that uh, that I see from them, I think I implemented it unconsciously sometimes. Uh -huh. um, so I think my parents moved down to to Atlanta when it was 
Like, nobody was in Atlanta. Now, Atlanta's kind of like a hot spot. Everybody comes to Atlanta. But um, but when we came to Atlanta, it was basically nothing here, you know? Um, and um, I, my, my dad started a business out here. My mom did as well, too. I, I just wow. think he just wanted, wanted more space, you know? New York is very crowded. Um, um, and I think that they just wanted me to just um, explore a lot more um, of just, just, you know, I New guess, York's also no. absurdly expensive. Yeah, exactly. There, there are parking exactly. spots in New York that cost four times my monthly rent in Wheeling. Yeah, yeah man. So, yeah, so, man. So both of your parents are entrepreneurs. That is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You you got played a pretty lucky hand then, getting dealt into that that life. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Um, and I think that I didn't really. You don't really realize things until you like until you. Until, um, you know, just looking back in retrospect, I just didn't know that was what was going on because yeah. your life is kind of away. Um, as a kid, you're kind of like a bit oblivious to it. So, yeah. you, just, you know, the day to day thing. And as I realized these certain strengths and things that I have in my, all my, my processes, the way I process things, just my, the way I, I think about things, it's very entrepreneurial that most of my, you know, friends and people that's more conservative and have a more structured way of living. So um, I think that's something as I got older, I, um, I knew it was a strength of mine. Um, and, um, and I just can't play it to my advantage now. That's really awesome. So, so what kind of stuff did your parents do when you were, that you remember as a teenager? Like what kind of stuff were they into? Yeah, um, they just always had um, different projects. Um, my, my, my father was, um, um, he started a clothing line. Um, and I think he was just generally um, doing some import export from from Italy or from France. He, he grew up traveling a lot when he was younger. Uh-huh. So I think that met as well too. So he started a lot of businesses. Um, um, he also started a limousine business as well too. Um, so he did a lot of um, just different businesses. I think that's that's what made him really happy. My mom was the same way. She, um, um, she had her different business that she started as well too. But it took her a little bit longer. Um, she, you know, I think mothers love structure a lot more. I think you know, so um, she it took a uh, it took a little bit longer to actually, you know, jump into the, you know, into the risk. You know, she yeah, had a little yeah. job then. You know, as she built that up, then she just went full on. So yeah, so I saw those things. Um, you know, as as um as I was growing up. Wow. So. So how did how did your parents meet? Because it sounds like they're they have some similarities, and are, are they still together? Out of curiosity. Yes, um, they are still together. Um, um, how did they meet? Um, I don't even know, man. I you know it's so funny. I I've never really even like asked them. This is like I just know. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, but somehow. Um, but I'm just sure. I'm. If I could think of anything, it would probably be some friends, you know. Uh, you know, back back then is completely a different dynamics and how people meet. Back yeah. then is like yeah. face to face, you know. Now, um, just with you know the emergence of social media and everything, everybody kind of meets very, you know, sporadically now. You can meet anybody from any any type it's of you know, super now, easy so. to meet people now. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it was probably some type of six degrees of separation, maybe some like, uh, you know, they met at a party or something. I don't know. I never really asked them. That's a good question, Jack. Yeah, I, I, I asked because I'm curious if, like, one of them was more entrepreneurial and then that inspired it in the yeah. other, or if they were, like, both were, like that, you know? Yeah, I think my, my father's always been more entrepreneurial than anything. I, I, I don't think, I remember him telling me a story that. Um, he worked for somebody, um, then a person, he, he started a job when he was young, um, and he worked for, uh, for, I'm not quite sure what, what, um, what company it was, but she, he did work for somebody that he realized like two days into the, into working that j- a job just wasn't for him to work for somebody wasn't just for him, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he's, he's never worked for anybody. He's always been his own, his own guy, you know, his own, his own boss, you know, he's that employee. So kind of, you know, get a chance to kind of see somebody build or something from ground up from something to nothing, you know, and, you know, um, and I think that rubbed off on my mom, like you said, I think she was a little more structured, she wanted to work for companies that have that guarantee, yeah. um, but she, I think, I think, you know, 
with your with your life partner, with your partner, you know, your wife or whatever. I think you guys kind of balance each other in certain ways. Um, and I think I see that in my parents as well too. Um, I think my mom had a little more faith and a little more was willing to risk it a little bit more after she saw, uh, you know, saw that my dad, my dad was doing well, you know, for himself. That's really awesome. Then it's yeah, definitely man. like, it's important when you're, when you're growing up, if, if you're interested in entrepreneurship that you kind of have to make sure that you do put yourself in scenarios where you have a say in like responding to problems. Back when I worked in retail, that was my biggest problem was that I, I hated that I was constantly in this environment where I had mm-hmm. to ignore problems. I could not apply everything that I knew to fix a problem because that was someone else's job. And like mm-hmm. that really bothered me because at, at, at home when I was doing my own like stuff and on eBay and that kind of thing, if there was a problem, yeah. I could apply myself and, pr- and address it, right? Whereas in, in a lot of other jobs, you can't, you can't apply that that critical thinking part of yourself and it in mm-hmm. the long run can can be bad you know so being in an environment where you can make those decisions is is really really beneficial yeah precisely man yeah so so let's see you were in you've been in georgia for a while um mm-hmm. how old are you now i probably should have asked this earlier oh yeah i, I just um i just started 32 nice so you yeah. have you have you, you're past the point where college was a thing. Did, did yeah. you go to college? What was that like? Yeah, I, um, man, um, yeah, I did. I, I did it just because. <laughs> yeah, I feel <laughs> you. Yeah. Know? Uh, I did it just because it was a thing to do. I think um, coming from high school, uh, I went to like a, I went to a magnet school, um, science, science and um, science and math school. Uh-huh. So just knowing that like, they groom a majority of the people, you know, um, in this senior year, you're just kind of groomed up to just kind of like find a college, find something, just do something after school. Yeah. Um, I was a little more rebellious than anything. Um, so I, um, I kind of sweat off that path a little, a little bit. Um, I ended up going back to school. Um, I dropped out. I ended up going back to school, um, get my um, high school diploma, then going to, um, then going to college, um, study, um, business um, for a little while, then um, then just I I I just kind of my group of, the group of people that I just kind of um, was around which is a lot more hands on about uh-huh. things. Uh, we know like you know you can just read as much as possible, but actually jump into it and just kind of see exactly um, um, you know the experience is the best teacher, like they always say. Yeah. So just that. I can just jump into something, then um, learn it at, 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 um, at to the best of my abilities, then make any type of adjustments as as I as I please with something more alluring to me than just being in school and just reading a bunch of books. You yeah, know, I understand it's, that definitely. It's, just, it's the same thing. Like you could just go on YouTube and learn about about you know um, working out all you want, but you have to go into the gym and actually start pumping some weights. That's yeah. how you see these. So I kind of have that aspect on things. Um, I, I like to just go in. I, obviously, I want to be critical and observe things before I jump in. Obviously, that's first thing. But I'm more of a hands-on person. So yeah, I went. I went to some college for a little for a little while. Um, then, um, um, then I wanted to find something that wasn't just a conventional way because I I didn't know exactly while trying to get my associate. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. What yeah. was, what, what was my major? So um, college is an expensive want, place to be if you don't know what you want. Exactly, exactly. And you know, I'm seeing a lot of my friends. I just I um I left um, high school with just doing a lot of things, um and um knowing their path. And and I, here I am, and still in college trying to figure out my path. Um, so it's um I'm I'm more of a person that I guess um. Trial and error has been my method. <laughs> so, um, um, and and that's that's um, so yeah. I went I went to college for a little while, um, but I didn't. I I um, finished a couple of semesters, but I ended up just falling into um, just doing other things. And um, yeah. and man, at least you had the sense to study business, though. Like I, I was in college for a year, and I had no idea <laughs> that I was interested in business back then. And if I had taken just like a year's worth of business classes, 
that would have actually mm-hmm. benefited me. Like it really would have. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I think that comes from my parents once again. Um, I know anything that you do, there's a business behind it. Yeah. You know, like however, whatever it is, there's always some type of structure that you, you need to know about the, fu- the fundamentals. So I was always aware of that. So I knew if I just didn't know what industry I wanted to be in, I just knew I wanted to be in the business part of the industry. Um, I love creative people. Um, I'm a creative. To, um, um, I'm largely a creative more than anything. But um, but I do know that I love the business component of things. You know, I love to see, I love to scale things. Um, and those type of things intrigue me more than anything. So I just knew business. I didn't know what business. I didn't know if it was going to be real estate. I didn't know if it was going to be you know, maybe media. I didn't, I didn't know music. I didn't know, but I just knew that somewhere in the business, I was, I was definitely going to be doing something in that, in that realm. Hey, that, I mean, that that's good, man. But when I when I was in in college, I I didn't know. Like I was studying psychology, and it, in the right. same sense, psychology can be useful in any sense. But, oh yeah, you know. Definitely. So so what definitely. what were you getting into out of? Uh, so it sounds like you le- you left college, right? You didn't yeah, you yeah. didn't you didn't get a degree. So what what was no. What was that like? Because there's absolutely a pressure to finish college, you know, and, and very okay. much like as a person who leaves it, you're going to have this kind of internal thing where you're like, all right, was it worth it? Like what, 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 what made you feel that what, was there something specific that you were pursuing that made you feel OK with leaving? Um, yeah, I would say um, I, I, I just saw that the internet was coming to to being and not and, and and i wouldn't say that like i'm some type of um you know person that saw it before it happened but i realized that um media was just becoming an integral part of my life so much uh-huh. um and this was early so um we re- we just really just jumped into it you know um i was already in some form of fashion to the media into the media business um just by you know the people i was surrounded by um and just being in atlanta i i saw that as well too so um so yeah i i that was really my um my so you, you know you, the- you truly felt in your heart that it was better opportunity for you to pursue something else than to continue with a degree yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I yeah, didn't man, really I feel you. I completely feel you. I didn't really yeah. for it, you know? Like, I know, um, I, I just didn't really see the need for it. I, I know that it was always going to be there. I see, I, I, I just wanted to, ex- I just felt like, you know, I just felt like the world was so uh, was so big and I was just stuck in a box, you know? And I yeah. was learning these things that I didn't really know if it was going to be essential to, um, to, to me. Um, and I just wanted to explore, man, to be just quite honest. I just want to explore more. Um, and I know that like, I, I could always go, I see people that's 40, 60, 70, going back to school. You know, I always know like there's, there's a way from, you know, if I really, if it was really compulsory for me to get that degree, there's yeah, always way to get that degree, but the experiences that I'll be able to get at a certain age, I, don't, I, knew, I knew those things were very elusive, right? I, yeah. I, I can't go back to being 19, 20 and experiencing different things. Um, but I could always grab a book and study for 10 hours and take a test <laughs> and pass it and get a degree. I know that's always going to be there. So yeah, that was just my outlook on it. That makes sense. Yeah. That's cool. So, um, one second, sorry. So what kind of stuff were mm-hmm. you, were you getting into then? What kind of entrepreneurial stuff? Right. Um, I think the main thing was eBay. eBay was just emerging then as well, too. Um, um, this was probably like early 2000s or so. So we were just, all the internet things were just starting to come. I think MySpace, Facebook, YouTube, all these things were just really like in, in this like ecstasy at, at that particular time. Yeah. Um, and so um, one thing we were doing with eBay, I was always, I've always been doing eBay. Uh, um, but I never focused on it as much as I did after I was in college, right? Um, I I had interest in in, um, in eBay, but um, but there was another there was another platform that a lot of people were using, which was more local. Was called Craigslist. Uh, so, yeah, Craigslist. Craigslist. So um um I just found myself, you know, just being 
And it wasn't like something I had planned out. It just happened just so that I just always wanted to build something, right? I'm always trying to build something. I don't know, you know, if it's, since I was a little kid, I was always Yeah, it's just how you are. Out. Yeah, you know, it's just, all, it's just wired in me. So um, our the main thing that I used to simply do is that um, I would just um, go on um, Craigslist and just buy items on Craigslist. Um, and um, and I'll get the items. And I knew, like, um, Craigslist was more of a local uh, marketplace, right? Mm-hmm. So I would simply just get the, the, the products from Craigslist and I just simply post it on eBay because I knew eBay was more of a um nationwide or yeah. you know uh, and international. international yeah yeah so it gave me that i, I kind of saw those two things matching up so it, it kind of gave me a um a good um um outsource to um to actually get done so i was doing that for a while and that took up a lot of my time as well too because as i saw you know the increment um getting more um i just i just i was like okay there's something here you know to to, to pursue a little bit more so yeah, so I was doing that a lot. Um, um, eBay. Oh, uh, real, eBay. real quick before you continue, just just so the viewers know, Craigslist is. Uh, it seems silly to explain Craigslist, but a lot of people are foreign, so they won't necessarily know what it is. Yeah, Craigslist yeah. is is you can think of it as a forum, basically, that you post that you're trying to buy or sell something. And the great thing about Craigslist is that there is no platform fee. So eBay will charge you like ten percent to sell something. Craigslist, you just post the ad and then you communicate with people. That's it. There's no yeah. like, it's very direct. It's as if you sold something to your roommate for 10 bucks. You get to have that yeah. $10. They don't take any of that. So it is often used as, as Sean is saying, to source products, which you then sell on some other marketplace. But go on. Yeah. So um, so I did Craigslist for a while um, and I just implemented that with eBay. Um, and you know, we, we did pretty well. Um, I think that our, our main thing was, uh, we saw a small, uh, small gap in the market space where, um, it wasn't intentional. It was just something that just, you know, being out, you know, and, and seeing certain, um, just connecting dots. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, that Noticing a opportunity. Of, yeah, exactly. So we would buy, um, we, we were seeing that a lot of, a lot of, uh, our, our, um, the people in the school with us needed MacBooks or needed laptops just in general. So yeah. we, would, we, we would be able to actually make that transition or just broker those deals for people um, that was in you know, certain schools um, um, around, our, um, um, around our facility or whatever. Um, and we would be able to just you know, get them certain uh, item, items that they needed. So that really went, that little small niche market really did, you know, really went really well for us. So that was what we kind of focused in on, was just, you know, simple um, college kids that's just looking for, you know, laptops, because you need that when you're in school. So we yeah, just felt like, that. yeah, so we started a company called um, Campus Mac. Um, and we just sold MacBooks and laptops and, you know, items to just, you know, college students. That was pretty much it. So that was like our first uh, venture out. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Cause those are one of those sales pretty profitable just based off of how expensive Macs are, you know, so. Right, right, yeah, yeah. And that's, it's interesting yeah. that you bring up the college environment because that's honestly my, the biggest thing I've learned personally from, because I am similar to you and I, I tried going to school and I just felt like it was not the right decision for me. I felt like mm-hmm. if I looked at how much money was going into it, it was like, mm-hmm. I could do anything for four years and even if I lost like 30, 40 grand, I would probably mm-hmm. be in a position where I can then lo- earn money, right? Like, and that's yeah. what you do with school. You're tr- you're spending four years and tons of money. Um, mm-hmm. so that was really unsettling to me. But that being said, it was absolutely hard to be away from the college environment. It's hard to find people who are ambitious mm-hmm. who aren't yeah. in college. Like, it's genuinely hard. A lot of the people who aren't in college just really aren't trying to make their lives better they are interested Mm -hmm. in complaining about their lives and like yeah that for me is the hardest part of leaving college it's it's not like the lack of a degree or the lack of learning or any of that it's it's about the people because really if you can surround yourself with ambitious people who are like-minded that's the easiest way to improve right right and like being able to meet those people outside of college can be kind of tricky. So that's why I've always liked being near college towns because I cannot mm-hmm. be in college myself, but then I can go hang out with all the college students and, you know, be right. around that vibe and that productivity. 
Yeah. So it was, it was a lot easier for, for, for us back then. It's, I think it would be a lot more uh, um, harder to do now. Um, but, you know, back then I was fresh out of, I was still, you know, out of, you know, uh, I was fresh out of college or whatever you want to say. I just, I just left college. So I still yeah. had that, that ecosystem of people I still knew in there. So it was very easy to kind of like find people that are still motivated. So yeah, to your point, exactly. Yeah. That, 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 um, that just the energy of wanting to do something or, you know, um, I think that was something that I w- you were able to get from just that atmosphere. Yeah, that's really important. Yeah. So, so at what point did I'm, I'm assuming you you got into drop shipping in some way, at some point? Yeah. Okay. Um, so tell tell like, me about that. How did you how did you hear about it? And what were you you were already flipping stuff on eBay? So. Yeah. So I was already flipping stuff on eBay, but um, just what I realized was that I kept so much capital and products. That was one of the things I didn't like. So, for example, if you had, we had like four or 10 or 20 MacBooks, you have so much capital that's yeah. like held up in that actual product um, that it was, was coming very hard. We needed to liquidate so much. And these were the small problems that you start realizing <laughs> once you start doing the business, right? It's like, okay, a problem has come up because business, business is really about solving problems, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. So, um, so the, the main thing was that we would be just, you know, have so much capital and all these items. And, um, and for, for, the, for the longest, I was like, there has to be a better way because certain situations would come up. It wasn't like we were like, you know, millionaires or anything, but it was just like certain situations would come up and we would like need liquidated cash, but I would have it in this product. I have it in that product. So I have to sell. Um, then I have to bring the price down. It was just so much that I was just learning just, just from, you know, from this transaction, I was like, I didn't want to just keep all my capital and products because the thing about electronics, um, um, if anybody knows that, it changes every like three to six months or so. So there's yeah. a new version. <laughs> out. So you can't keep it for long. Um, so you have to figure out a way to actually get rid of it, drop the price if you have to do so. You can actually, you know, reinvest and flip and, and, and put into another product flip. So um, I just kind of left the eBay thing alone for a long time because I just wasn't interested in keeping my capital and products. Um, then the market had changed a little, a little bit as well too, during that time period. You know, with anything, you know, it's always constant change, even if you realize it or not, you just always gotta be aware that has to kind of like your sixth sense knowing that even if I don't notice the change, I know like that's, that's the only thing that's guaranteed. Yeah, you know change. it's happening. A known yeah. unknown. Exactly, exactly, Jack. So, so that was, so I kind of started seeing that as well too, um, um, Craigslist was coming a little, was becoming, was becoming a little more saturated as well too. Um, and you know, a lot of, you know, once a, a platform launches off, at the the, um, the pioneers kind of get a chance to kind of explore and see what the new thing is in. Then it comes the after crowd, which yeah. you know, <laughs> it usually behind and everything. So, <laughs> so once that crowd comes in, it kind of you know becomes very muddled or whatever. So I kind of saw that was happening. So I wanted to just do something completely different. Um, I, um, you know, took a lot of my investment out and just put it into, um, 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 music products, you know, just music uh, equipment. So I was doing a lot of um, content with just music for a little while. Um, so drop shipping didn't come until a little bit later, man. Um, I really didn't even know what it was. I had an idea that that might've been possible from eBay. Um, but there was, there, um, um, from eBay. But there wasn't any platforms like sources where you could actually do um, the transaction like a, a Amazon or a, a Walmart. Any of these platforms wasn't really available then um, with eBay. Or yeah. maybe I was just weird, right, about how the method to actually get it done. So I just just didn't do dropshipping until like maybe, so I'm, rel- I'm relatively new in dropshipping, to be, to be quite honest with you, maybe at eight, nine months now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, no, dropshipping yeah. has been around for. I actually like so. I when I was selling on eBay, I I bought mm-hmm. this book about taxes because I wanted to learn about like sales and use tax and what taxes I need to pay as an eBay seller. And I I specifically remember that this was the first time in my life I ever heard about dropshipping, 
And uh, there was one there section was... <laughs> in this book that briefly mentioned drop shipping and just completely glanced over it. Says that it's like a stupid game with incredibly low margins, hugely competitive. And the book was basically like, there's no reason to ever do it ever. And I was just like, oh, okay, that seems like a silly idea. And then yeah. I just moved on with my life. And then like six months later, I get into it. But it was just, it's funny because there, there absolutely is this perception of drop shipping. Um, particularly by eBay sellers and people who don't drop ship, where it generally, if you know about drop shipping, but you don't know too much, you've probably heard bad things about it. It's, it, it mm -hmm. definitely has a bit of a, a negative rep. And that's one of the reasons that I do these YouTube videos is because I believe that at some point drop shipping will become more mainstream and that we, I really, really, really want there to be a major platform that actually like wants you to drop ship on them, gives you a mechanism to do it and like works with you to accomplish that and provide good customer service. That absolutely does not exist right now, right? We don't have, we don't have a major platform that is focused on this, this fact that drop shipping can be done by almost anybody. So, so there's a way to take advantage of that as a platform, right? In order to get to that point, we need more transparency with dropshipping. We need more people talking about what they do, showing their faces, making these kind of videos and talking about things. So that's kind of a, a long-term goal that I have personally with dropshipping. Yeah, I think you're pioneering that. I think you are. Um, yeah, um, I, I think there is a, a bit, to, um, a bit um, of a um, um, lack of knowledge about dropshipping. Um, and some, there's a lot of misinformation about drop shipping as well too. But you know, with anything that's kind of new, there's always going to be the skeptics, right? Yeah. So, um, um, those this is just something that you just have to be aware of. There's just going to be people that are very pessimistic about things and not willing to just give it a try. Um, obviously there have to be some type of moral codes and ethics when you're doing business with anything. So, um, with any people that, with anybody that's doing drop shipping, I think that's one thing that they have to be aware of is that you, what you want to do is just provide the best customer service to that person. You have to look at that other person that's receiving that item or that product um, as somebody that's your friend, you know, uh, for lack of a better word, and you want to provide that best best value for that person. So that's kind of like my mind frame about it. It's like, I know if I ship it to somebody, I want to make sure they have the best experience. I want to leave a note. I want to just say something like, just something, just let them know that I, I'm grateful and I'm thankful that they used our um, our uh, account or our platform for it. So, um, so yeah, um, I think that you know, as you said, as you know, as the years come um, come by, I think um, the light was shed on drop shipping a little bit more. But um, but yeah, for right now, it's cool. The people that know it know it, and the people that don't, um, they'll catch up. <laughs> so, what did um, where did where did you first? hear about drop shipping um what did i first hear about drop shipping um so i think it was a youtube video it might have been your youtube video to be honest jack that would be cool <laughs> yeah it might have been your, your I, I i think i saw it like you know how youtube sometimes have like um suggested or rec recommended videos yeah, yeah so yeah. I'm, I'm i'm i i i tend to I tend to like look for things that I haven't seen before. That's always my thing when I get on the internet. I like yeah, exposure. Let me talk about something I had before because I, you know, as humans, we're creatures of habits. So I'll go to the same website every day, look what's news, same feed. I'm, I'm always like, okay, I want to find something because the, the internet has more has more depth than than you realize. So um, then, so I, I think it might have been from you know all these new drop shipping videos. I just started seeing them a lot more. I didn't know what drop shipping was. Um, but I know that definitely I think your channel or your videos exp um, was one of the, the, the main channels that explained it a lot more, the method of job shipping. And when, once I got it, the, 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 the light bulb went up. I was like, oh, this is very simple to, uh, to eBay stuff I was doing before. I was like, interesting. Yeah. Uh, now I don't even need my capital. I don't have to put twenty or $30,000 in capital anymore. I can literally just you know, work it uh, on, on my laptop. I was like, this is incredible. Like, why, why are people not doing this? Yeah, <laughs> so, and especially because you sold on eBay already. So you, you get all your money straight away, I'm assuming. You don't have to deal with PayPal jail. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, um, 
I had to get a different um, um, account because uh, the, okay. the gotcha. I, just, I stopped using it and I didn't re- remember the password, the e- the email. I didn't remember anything. All those things was like kind of separated with, you know, what we had with the, um, the Campus Mac and all uh, and that company. Yeah, um, yeah. Everything was kind of like brand new. And I was, I'm, I'm always up for the challenge. I was like, okay, cool. Like, this is a challenge. Let's figure it out. Like, I'm always down to like kind of figure it out. So how did how did you so you you did deal with PayPal jail then? Yeah, of course, yeah. And so how how did you how did you handle that? That's relevant because that's one of the things most beginner dropshippers are scared of. Oh, what do you be scared of it? It's just a process. PayPal is just simply just you know making sure that transaction goes smoothly. You know for for, for people, it's just that's just how I looked at it because you know. PayPal is very strict about certain things. Um, um, so I was already aware of that just by dealing with them before. So I just knew PayPal jail was just for them just to you know, guarantee that the person was just getting the item. So it wasn't really a big deal for me. Um, once the um, once somebody purchased the, um, the product, the, the, uh, the actual um, uh, money would be in the PayPal jail for a certain amount of time. But what I, I, what I, what I already did is I already had some type of funds in, in my PayPal already. Yeah. So it, it wasn't really a big deal to me. So I was just like, okay, well, you know, as long as the transaction goes through and um and I and, and I provide the product that I send provide no PayPal, I call them, they'll they'll be able to release that. So I was very used to PayPal. It wasn't a really a big deal for me. Yeah, you got the right headspace, man. And and that that's one thing that's a little bit frustrating is that there's there's a lot of people who try and get into this and they're yeah. they're they don't realize it, but they're just looking for obstacles to convince themselves it's not worth it. Like they that's what their headspace is. And you can't succeed with that headspace you have to like you have to just throw yourself at things and then try them for yourself and then see how it goes you can't just be looking for something to be like oh it's not worth trying because of that and i'll have to deal with that so no Yeah. (laughs) yeah um you know like i think most people um think that things are not possible i think we we come from a society that's very like very you know skeptical about everything like there was a point in time where they thought that we couldn't fly you know like the <laughs> we'll right, never then the right brothers, we'll never fly how is that possible then the right brothers was like okay well let's we'll take on that challenge you know yeah um you know i think it was roger bannister they say you couldn't run a, 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 a um uh a mile in, in four minutes or so um and then we did that. So if, if anything, if history is anything, is that there's always going to be new innovations and we're always, we're always going to try to move forward. That just in our DNA as humankind. Um, and I think that, um, and I think that most people, if they realize that, is that it's not really, nothing's impossible. It's like it, um, uh, Thomas Edison tried 10,000 times on one, on, on one light bulb, 10,000 times. Yeah, you got it. 10, like. 000. The failure process is it's just part necessary it. for success. It's, exactly, it's the other side of the coin, right? It's the du- duality type thing. So I, I just kind of understood that there's always going to be these challenges, just how you overcome the challenges. So I, I think if more people would just realize that 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 um that that truth right there, then it'll, going into it, they'll have more of a positive mindset um, about you know just drop shipping just in general, and yeah. things will work. Yeah, I absolutely agree. There's there's a metaphor that comes to mind that I think about a lot. And it's if it's imagine you're making a pot, right? You want to make the perfect clay pot. There's two yeah. ways to go about that. You can do all the research in the world. You can talk to all the experts. You can try and educate yourself to the point where you know what a perfect pot looks like. And then you can attempt to make it, right? Yeah. Trouble with that is is you you you're doing all this research like you said before you get experience and the way that I try and live and the way that I encourage other people to live is to understand that if from the beginning you just been like all right I'm gonna make a hundred pots and then you make a hundred pots one of them at least one of them is gonna be amazing you just mm-hmm. did the right thing at the right time at the right place and you got lucky and you had a little bit of experience that it all came together and you had that good product right and the, the mm-hmm. act. You can guarantee that that happens if you iterate enough and if you try enough. But you could spend ages studying to try and create the perfect thing. And again, Mm -hmm. if you're not in the act of creation, then ultimately 
maybe it'll work. Maybe you can educate yourself enough to make a, an amazing product. But the reality is, the only way you can guarantee it is if you are continuously creating, and then you just happen uh -huh. to make it. You know? Yeah, yeah I I think to to add to that, I think that's 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 very similar to an analogy where um of uh, um um there's you know farmers are a, a great example of that, right? Like you see farmers, they have they know that you have to like put all these seeds out and know some of the seeds are not gonna grow. So yeah. they put more abundance of seeds out, right? So they know the harvest is gonna be great. So like you said, like you just know like, you know, just do as much as possible. Put put your ten thousand hours as I call it in it. Um and you know that you're gonna get to that other side that you want to get to, man. Um, I think you you nothing you nailed it right on the head with that. So so tell me more about your your drop shipping interests. What um what what tools do you use? What are you trying to accomplish with drop shipping? What's going on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um drop shipping is just I feel like drop shipping right now, um, it's for me is just another part of my, you know, transitional period. Um um I, I like the concept. I think it's a it's a great it's a great service that you actually can provide to people all of, all around the world, possibly. Um, and my main theme is just to use this as a platform as a stepping stone. You know, um, um, the main thing I want to really just get into um, is is real estate. I, I do want to do a lot of. Um, um, do you want to get into studio. Airbnb and stuff? Yeah, exactly. Just yeah. time space, you no know, rental space. Uh, especially with Atlanta being such a um, a, a great place, um, and but um, drop shipping, I, I see as a, as a tool to kind of just get that next stage. So um, yeah, my main goal is just to um, um, you know do do um, do drop shipping for maybe a couple of years or so, um, and just provide the best service possible. It's really it's really as simple as that. I'm not trying to you know be the next guru at uh, at drop shipping or anything. Um, I just want to use this as a vehicle. I think it's an excellent um, vehicle. I think if more people knew about it, more people would use it just because of the overhead that you don't have, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Or you really need just a thought, you know, or you know, getting it done and have a laptop and and um, and in the access. That's you know, you know, I'm simplifying it, but pretty much that. Um, so so dropshipping has been has been good right now. I'm still getting used to it. Uh, I'm still learning a lot of things about it. I've been using um like you said what what softwares. I've been using um DS um DSM tool. DSM tools um and I've also been um buying a lot of um using some of the um platforms like cashback platforms as well too and i'm seeing how that works as well too but these little small nuances of things i didn't really know like plays a huge part in the bigger picture of drop shipping yeah. so um, that um you know finding the best sources um different sources you know obviously i think you more than anything promote um um a walmart yeah um, so so i i use walmart but it's not a it's a, it's a safe source to learn about drop shipping. I wouldn't say yeah. that it's an, a good source to be profitable. It's highly, highly competitive, and it's absolutely worth experimenting with other sources. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, 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 I use drop, I use on Walmart um, just because it's recommended by you. Um, and I, I, I like it. It's, it's good, but I also, also, I also saw that you could also get some of the same products from different sources as well too. So there's a lot of things that I'm realizing it's just not one place. But you but I know a lot of things that you have um have uh, stated with that it's probably really good to just have maybe one or two to three sources. Don't spread it out too much. Um now I'm, I'm starting to see why that's that should be also uh be something that's taught as well too. I think obviously it you want to know it absolutely depends. Like because because on one hand if you're if you're using one source, you're you're taking a lot more risk, um, because if that one source if that, does cancel your orders and that kind of thing, then you know that that that's a, that's a big problem. Whereas if it's only a quarter of your orders that are being canceled because you don't use four sources, different story. Um, that being said, like I've been able to grow a Walmart ordering account, and I don't really have problems with cancellations unless they're they're gift cards. Um, but it, it really like. It, it, it's important that I address that uh, there's a lot of things that I do 
that are really good for me and my development, but that does not mean that they are a good decision for people interested to learn about dropshipping. Yeah, yeah. but I, I think like, for, especially for the beginner who hasn't used eBay before, yeah. who hasn't used, yeah. who's not acclimated with just, you know, how the ecosystem on the internet works, um, believe it or not, there's still some people like that. Um, it's, it's, yeah, I think that those platforms, Walmart, um, I think, um, school grid, um, I know you the school grid or, or the, um, the other one, we're getting it right now. Hydralister. Um, Hydralister. Yeah, um, there's those there's are tons excellent. of options, tons of options. Yeah, but it, I think more now than ever, I'm seeing a lot more things popping up or maybe I'm just being more aware of it because I'm seeing, you know, that just, you know, all the things that's coming into the market space. Both. Yeah. So, but yeah, so I've been using DS, um, DSM tools. I, I, I like DSM tools. Um, um, I think they're great. Um, I've been using, um, that's pretty much it, to be honest with you. I mean, there's other things that I'm doing as well, too, like Google Sheets and all that, all these things I'm seeing that you guys are telling or, you know, um, uh, implementing, you're telling us to implement. I've been doing those as well, too. Do you have any you have- virtual assistants? Um, not yet. I am going to. Um, I just wanted to get more hours in. You I know? gotcha. Uh, that, that is one I thing just, that I strongly, like, strongly encourage yeah. getting into. Getting, getting used getting, to using virtual assistants is a big turning point. Um, uh, and it's, it's definitely, definitely, you're always going to feel like, you know, you could learn maybe. more before you do it. And you're always going to feel like nervous about training somebody and about the performance of their work. You're always going to feel those things. There's never going to be a time where it feels like it's like, okay, I should get into it now. Like you, you got to kind of overpower that. And that, that for, from my perspective is something that if you get into drop shipping and you've been doing it for like six months or so, that is the next biggest thing that you can do is get used to using any kind of virtual assistance, just like... It, that was a big turning point for me personally because it like I I can overcome my personal weaknesses. I can overcome that like I don't like optimizing titles by having virtual assistants who do it. You know, it's very it is a big turning point, and I strongly strongly encourage you to do anything that you can to get into some form of virtual assistants sooner. Okay. I, I think that you nailed it. <laughs> I think you you beat that into me. I think I will. And, and once I get it as well too, once I get the um the um the VA, um I'll also, you know, contact you and let you know how that's going as well too. Yeah, that's cool. I'm I'm adding yeah. stuff to the the dropshipping course right now about virtual assistants. Because okay. I got like yeah. I have a I have a really good relationship with my virtual assistant and I consider mm-hmm. him like a business partner. Cause he, he watches okay. these YouTube videos. He really like, he encourages me. He gives me ideas about topics. He like is really, oh, really okay. valuable to me. And I got so lucky and it, it's, uh, that was just through doing these YouTube videos. So one yeah. thing that I'm doing for people, and again, it, cause we can do more calls in the future, right? Is that yeah. if you're looking for a virtual assistant, then I'll do kind of an interview where we talk about exactly the kind of work that you're looking for, what you're trying to pay yourself as an individual, and then also mm-hmm. have your contact information in the video, right? So then anybody who is watching and is interested can reach out to you. And I think that that's something that is really like, some people are hesitant to have a virtual assistant who like wants to learn the business because they're scared yeah. that the virtual assistant's going to make their own business and whatever. Like from my perspective, you want somebody invested in educating themselves about the business. Even if they want to yeah. make their own thing at some point, you want that employee because they mm-hmm. will be diligent. They will learn things. They will give you valuable insight. They will make it more like a team and less like, oh, I'm just doing these listings for you and fucking off, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, if, if anybody's interested um, in doing a VA, um, I, I would love to have another mastermind with me. Um, um, so yeah, definitely get in contact with Jack and or hit the link <laughs> and we'll do that. Yeah, yeah. And if, if that's something you're interested in, then we would do another video at some point because most of the people walk to this point, like these interview videos have a 
they wouldn't necessarily see them. I would have to, I would have to do the video in a way where it's obviously an advertisement to find virtual assistants. So this is something like maybe you'd get lucky and somebody will contact you if you want to right. give your contact information now. Um, but yeah. if we want to do it more properly, then we would make a separate video about it. Yeah. I'm, I'm down, whatever. <laughs> I'm down. Um, yeah. So I, I guess yeah, we could do a second video. That'd be dope. Um, and cool. And yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm down for it. Why not? <laughs> I'm sure. I'm, sh I'm sure. Um, I'm sure there's somebody out there. I'm just, it's always somebody watching, especially yeah. online. Yeah. It's kind of mind blowing. Like if, once a YouTube channel gets to like two or 3,000 subscribers, at that point, mm -hmm. there is usually an individual watching videos from that channel at any given moment all day. So if you look at wow. the amount of hours humans are spending watching a YouTube channel, once it, it's yeah. at like two or 3,000 subscribers, that usually means that more than 24 hours per day are being spent watching that content. To kind of give, like, that's insane, isn't it? Like, to think that, like... All, all these channels with only like a couple thousand subs, they are getting viewed constantly by somebody on the planet at any given moment. Yeah, it's kind of amazing. It's, it's crazy. It's, really, it's, really, it's crazy. It's mind blowing. Yeah. Wow. I just like you just bringing that up just just made me think about that as well too. I never thought about it like that. Wow. Sure. So is there is there anything in particular you want to ask or talk about? Um. Um, yeah, I, I guess, where, where do you see this, um, um, Jack, where do you see this going? Um, uh, if I could ask you a question, I guess, um, everything has been on me. Uh, where do you see this going? What is the, um, you know, five year, 10 years? What do you, what do you, what do you think this is going to be in 2020, 2025? What are, what are you, ref when you say this, what are you referring to? Um, um, just the, the space of, um, drop shipping. Do you think, um, I, I, I know currently right now there's a lot of things that's going on in, in, in the space as far as regulations is being done. Um, I think there was just a regulation like maybe a couple of days ago. As part no, of so I, 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 I did a video talking about an old thing and I didn't realize it was old. So that, that if, if you're referring to the video I just did a couple of days ago about mm -hmm. the terms of use. So that is, I need to do a follow-up video about that. Um, but just, just to break that down quickly to you, about a year ago, eBay did, there was a change made to their API usage agreement. The API is when, what an application needs to interact with to make changes to your eBay account, right? Mm -hmm. And so in that API license agreement, it directly says that anything related to arbitrage um, is restricted without permission from eBay. So what that means is that you can have arbitrage software, but you need permission from eBay to do it. They need to kind of be like, you know, it's against our terms, but you've told us you've communicated. And so we're going to work with you and that's okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, Jim. So ultimately what, what I learned is that like that, that is something that eBay has in their terms and that's something that I, I had no idea like i had no idea that the technically drop shipping arbitrage software violates ebay's api terms of use like mm -hmm. I, I didn't know that was a thing right um, but that's been a thing for a while so it's not like it's like game over um but it, it is it is a bit uncertain right now but drop shipping in general like you said you're you're focusing on it to be a stepping stone to something else that's perfect mm -hmm. that is absolutely how you should think about it. Drop shipping should never be like the end goal. You shouldn't just want to be a drop shipper for the rest of your life. It very much yeah. needs to be something that plays a role in your life towards a bigger picture, towards something else in your future. Um, maybe even it's the thing that networks you and gets you to meet the people and then you do something else, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I don't think that it's really, like it's changing, but it's always changing. It's eBay mm -hmm. is never going to ban drop shipping. They need the business from it. However, eBay is absolutely concerned about the effect that um, retail arbitrage or drop shipping has on the buyer experience. And okay. they will do things that they perceive will help the buyer experience, even if they hinder drop shippers. Um, 
and it's 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 important to understand that the eBay allows you to drop ship, but you you will encounter some flack from that. Like there there have been times recently. One of the reasons I did the video uh, talking about the 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 agreement was because I had a call with an eBay rep and they straight up were like, you need to look at the eBay terms of use because you're drop shipping and you need to reassess whether that's a viable business model. And I was like, um, can you tell me where in the terms of use? Like, what are you talking about? And he was like, yeah. I can't tell you exactly where, but you need to look over that because this is most likely not a viable business model on eBay. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I got genuinely concerned because normally, like, reps aren't like that. These these are anchor st support reps, right? So yeah. you have to have an anchor store, an enterprise store to talk to them. They're, they're not outsourced as much. They're trained much more, and they, they really kind of know their stuff, right? Um, yeah. And so that, that conversation was definitely a bit concerning, and that was, like, like two months ago. And right. that, ultimately, I, I never found the line that he was referring to um, because I didn't realize that he was talking about the API um, agreement, not the e actual eBay terms of use. And so once I found that thing a couple days ago, I was like, oh, because also my, so do you, know, do you know anything about eBay developers accounts? No, I do not. Um, so in order to make an application uh, that interacts with eBay's API, you need to make an, an API is just like, you can think of it as like when you go to eBay, you're going to their website to accomplish tasks within eBay. Uh -huh. If you were a, a software program, you don't go to eBay.com. You go to the eBay API. The API is okay. how software interacts with eBay's like servers and how it gets like items to change price and listings to get taken down or listing to be created. All of that is API, right? Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, you have to create a developer's account. This is separate from your eBay account and you get a set of these like keys, which are like passwords basically. And so you can link those and that's how you establish like, okay, this is my eBay account that I want you to access the API with to make these changes on this eBay, eBay account. Right? You need that kind of like system to know whose eBay account you want to modify and with what program, right? So the reason I did, made that video, um, it, it's not like I just found that information. I got, I got my eBay developer's account got banned specifically stating that I had broken the terms of use and told me to read that specific section of restricted activities. So I then went oh, wow. and did that. And then for the first time, it's like, it very expressly says no, oh. no arbitrage stuff is allowed without permission. Right. And even, even so, so specifically to the point that it then describes exactly what a repricer is and then exactly what a tracking uploader is and then exactly oh. what auto ordering is. So it's, it's a very <laughs> specific, it's not like a general clause about, the general vagueness of retail arbitrage right. is like this, this, and this uh, are examples yeah. of what we're talking about, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So that definitely freaked me out a bit. Um, but I, I now understand that it's like, it's kind of like Walmart where they, Walmart reserves the right to cancel your order for resale. They also reserve the right to cancel your order for any reason, if it's for personal use. So, it's eBay kind of being like, all right, we are aware that, that arbitrage can have a very negative effect on the buyer experience if we don't regulate it. So from their perspective, they are saying, you can only do this if you're in communication with us. Um, and it, it doesn't really seem that way based on the way that they word it. And it's definitely old and it's not always enforced, but that's kind of one, one thing that some people feel is that eBay is going to start enforcing these kind of things more because technically they wouldn't need to make any changes. They wouldn't need to update anything. They can just be like, Hey, your violation, this is why And they're right. You know, it's in their terms of use. The only reason you can do it if you're an approved company is just because you have their permission to break their terms of use, which they can yeah. for any reason, they can just be like, no, we don't feel that way anymore. Right? So it, it does mean that if, you are developing dropshipping software um, and it works with the API, 
that you are a little bit vulnerable to that. And understand that as long as you have a good reputation, that kind of thing, then you know, eBay is probably not going to have a problem. They're going to keep you as a verified application. However, say that you're doing some sketchy things and eBay doesn't like how you're operating. That can change very quickly. eBay can just be, they, they are fully within their right to just be like, no, we don't, we don't trust that you're being upfront with us. We don't trust what you're doing with the user's data. So we're no longer going to allow you to break the terms of use and we're going to um, take away your developer's keys. Basically, they ban the, the account, right? Um, so it's, it, it is important to understand that you don't, you don't always have to interact with the eBay API. Like to take Skugrid as an example, you like Skugrid has a database, a CSV file of all of your listings and then also the source listing. So they can check the source price and then change the price in the CSV file without doing any API calls at all. Because the only API call is to actually be like, okay, we recognize this difference. Now we need to change it on the, the eBay item itself. Um, you can work around this and never have to interact with the API call by just having some program like Skugrid create the CSV file with all of your updated prices and then you just upload it to eBay through file exchange. So there's absolutely like, even if eBay were to choose to enforce things, there would absolutely be workarounds. Um, but it is important to know that all this stuff is possible, right? And, and to talk yeah. about it so that these conversations actually happen. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that, um, that's pretty much how I feel about it. It's there's stuff going on. There's always stuff going on, and there's stuff that can freak you out. It, you got the right mentality by viewing dropshipping as a stepping stone. Yeah, um, I think one thing that I I know that you spoke about as well too is like um, I'm trying to put more um more emphasis on YouTube videos as well too. I, I know you spoke about that a little bit in one of your videos saying that you, you felt like YouTube was a way bigger um, um, advantage to you just as, as overall. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Oh yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I, and that is true. I view YouTube as the biggest opportunity in the world. Um, huh. and, and that's because when it comes to like developing yourself as an individual and living a happy, fulfilling life, Mm -hmm. Happiness and fulfillment comes from being around individuals that you respect and admire who also respect and admire you and you that that is what makes a human happy. The only reason yeah. that personal development and like having your own things, having a big house, having a good job, the only reason that that stuff matters is because it attracts other people into your life. Ultimately, feelings of happiness and fulfillment only come from interaction with other individuals. And a lot of times when you're trying to be successful or there's some kind of opportunity, um, like you have to sacrifice a part of yourself to engage in that opportunity. Dropshipping is a good example of this because dropshipping itself isn't really fun. It's not like optimizing titles all day is pretty boring. It's kind of dull. Yeah. You know? it's not, you're not making people's lives any better by yeah. like selling them a product that they could get cheaper somewhere else. You know, it's right. you can't make that argument, you know. Yeah. Um, Whereas with YouTube, if you do it right, you can just take whatever you're passionate about and whatever makes you happy and then just do that more and more and more. And, and that in, it connects you with other individuals who also do the same thing. It puts you out there so that you can be accessed. Um, and ultimately, it's these interactions with other people, these, these people that you meet and become close to. Those are the things that change your life. It's not about just getting rich or earning money. Like you can think that that's how it works. But ultimately, yeah. if you don't get in with the right kind of people and you don't develop yourself emotionally and mentally, if you get yeah. a lot of money, you're fucked because you, yeah. will, you will get into addictions. You will get into problems with debt. You will get into these really intense scenarios because when there's more money, there's so much more to lose, right? And ultimately, like, I oh, think I consider yeah. YouTube such a good opportunity because of how humans work and the fact that you can do what makes you happy and use yeah. the YouTube channel and maybe you don't earn much money at first, but ultimately it's a guaranteed way to get these interactions with other individuals who change your life. Yeah. I think I think you you articulated that pro properly. Um, I I um, watching watching some of the the, um, the content. Um, I I I think that 
when you express that um, in one of the videos that I watched, I realized, okay, that I think that has a little more of uh, that. That's really the purest I think that um, that that you want to be in, right? Yeah. I think that is really everything, really all the facts, you know, cut out of it. I think that's the purest that um, that it is. Um, right now, I think that, um, like you said, I am using eBay as a, as a um, you know as a vehicle um, and the drop shipping method, the method of drop shipping itself as a a way to to get into what I want to do in the long term, which is more of a long-term goal is um, real estate. But I also see YouTube being um, almost a um, um, uh, a fusion for, for that as well, too. So um, also, um, I think I'm going to be doing a lot of YouTube videos as well, too, just because you said it. Um, and I think that um, the information that you that you um, that I've seen in your channel, for most of the part, has been very accurate. Um, and so YouTube is something I am going to be um, I'm doing a lot more of as well, too. Just simply just... Can you send me a message in Skype? Because I just made a YouTube course, and I can give you a free copy of it. And I'm definitely... Mm -hmm. I'm really proud of it. I really poured my heart into it, and it's the third course I've made, so I have more experience yeah. with it. But, like, nobody... Like, only two people have bought it. So I need I need okay. some people to, like, go through and give me some feedback about it. Um, okay. But it's, it's, it. it's all about what we're just talking about now, how, like, viewing yeah. YouTube as an opportunity and all that kind of stuff, so... Yeah, um, yeah. Right, right now I've been doing a lot of different things. Um, obviously, drop shipping is one, and also I've been doing a lot of product testing as well too. Um, so yeah, so definitely, um, um, I, um, companies reach out to me and just you know send me you know different products and I test it out for them. Oh, that's um, good for YouTube um, work. Yeah, so so I'm seeing something along the lines of that, or you know, some some something along the lines of you know um, just showing people my my process of, you know, going from drop shipping into, into real estate and just, you know, capturing that on YouTube. Yeah. So that, that's, that's, I think that's the main thing I want to just kind of like convey more than anything. This is just my process of using um, drop shipping. I'm just a regular guy using drop shipping to, um, to get into, you know, uh, real estate. So that's just really it. Um, and I'll use YouTube to document that. And I think, I think people find that maybe valuable just knowing that they can use, um, Drop shipping to to get to wherever they want to get to, or if it's if it's if it's helping them get out of a job, um, is helping them you know travel around the world, if, if that's what they want to use it for, I think drop shipping is a great tool to do that. Yeah, yeah, and for if you want to travel and drop ship, like guys, I was able to travel because of drop shipping, despite the fact that I hadn't made any money doing it. Like I made a little yeah. bit of money, but not much at all. But just because I had a YouTube channel. And I knew, and I can talk about drop shipping. I'm educated about it. That alone yeah. was enough for me to be able to travel and quit my job, just to give some some glimpse into into YouTube. And that that's something we kind of touched on earlier is this this concept of a known unknown. And as yeah. as an entrepreneur, you kind of make a trade. You trade certainty for freedom, and that's something that if you can really understand how that that portrays and what makes entrepreneurial people different than other people it, it, it helps definitely helps yeah I, I think with drop shipping you have to have some type of entrepreneurial bone in your body i don't think it's very conventional i don't think most people would you know most people would really take that risk in it so i mean you have to be some somewhat of a um a thrill chaser or a um you know some somebody that just loves challenges to actually take on drop shipping because um i mean once you once you learn the method i think it, it is um something that you know that you most people love doing it just because of all the freedom it, it provides for you i don't think there's anything like this you know that i've ever seen um that provides this you know type of freedom um this other thing this other other methods as well too that's online. I think people you know generally know about, but I think eBay dropshipping is a little bit different. I think it's more friendly as well too. Um, that's one of the most approachable that. forms of dropshipping. Definitely, definitely, one hundred percent from what I've seen um, just on the space. So, yeah, I think. Um, and if you've already used eBay before, it, it comes a little bit more natural to you because you kind yeah. of know how everything works. Yeah. All right, man. So I I gotta leave pretty soon. Is there um, 
Anything else you want to talk about? Anything else you want to ask before we end the call? Yeah, um, yeah, I would love for you to send me that link to, to the YouTube video. I definitely want to uh, to YouTube course. I'm sorry, uh, I definitely want to do that. And um, and I will, you know, once I go through that course, I'll implement the things that you, um, you, you know, you um, highlighted on those things, and I'll also doc- document that on my YouTube channel as well too. Wicked. So that, yeah. yeah. I yeah, definitely do part that. of the course is actually doing one of these calls that you're on right now. So you've already done oh, part of the course. Uh, nice. <laughs> nice. I'm already I got, got a head start. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, and um and that and um also want to say that um I I'm 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 glad that I did this interview uh, with you, Jack, and I, I actually um, appreciate the content that you're putting out. Um, because I don't know if you know it, that is is valuable to somebody. And, and um, that you might not even know, and um, and I, I I just want to make sure that you know that. So I want you to keep Thank putting you. these out. Um, um, so it's just you know you know from one person that you in the in the, in the matrix of of the internet space um, um, to to another is that the content you're putting out is useful to somebody. And I'm glad that I was able to actually get this um, and use it. And um, and you know and uh, and I hope more comes to you for, for that. I'm I'm glad, man, and that that's kind of one thing I'm trying to focus on with this channel now is understanding that like, I know I know about dropshipping. I'm I'm educated, and I've talked to a lot of people, but that's not where the true potential of this channel lies. That the real power of it lies in the community, and it's all of the information that is in the people who follow this YouTube channel. That is in an insane amount of information, and that's one reason yeah. I'm trying to transition to these calls where we're just talking about stuff. Um, yeah. Because it's just like, I wanna make this more about the people in the community and less about yeah. like my opinion on stuff because like that that's not very valuable to me, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but how you guys think, your experiences, the kind of things that you guys go through, I think is more valuable um, to yeah. everybody else. Yeah, we have, a, we have a great little mastermind here on Jack. Um, and also, I also want to ask you before I, before I let you go, I know you have to leave. Um, have you ever read the book, The Alchemist? The Alchemist? No, I have not. Although okay. these calls, are, I have like a list of books I need to read from these calls. So. Yeah, really? Okay, so I would, I would, I would say The Alchemist by Polio Puello. Um, that's a book. And if I have to send it to you, I will send it to you. <laughs> I want to read that book as well, too. I think that's going to add on. If, to what if you want to send me a book, that, that, that would be great. We can do, yeah. we could, that could be the trade for the course. Sounds good. Yeah, let's do that. Why not? I always, if somebody actually like goes through the effort of supplying me with something, there's definitely like a more, it's, I, I, I tend to follow through and read, read things much more when I can see that somebody else has like put in some effort. So yeah, that, that'd yeah. definitely be cool. All right, That'd guys. Awesome. See you next time, okay? Okay, great. Great talking to you, man. That was fun. All right, take care. Ciao. Cool. I'm liking these calls, guys. It's definitely fun. Thanks for watching. And again, you want to be interviewed? Look in the description. There's a link. You can click on that link. And then you can schedule a time with me and you will get a call from me or a Skype call or a Google Hangout call. Like, as you can see, this person, they literally just gave me their phone number and I called them. So if you don't want to show your face, you don't have to. Um, I personally think it's much better because I don't want like the video to just be of me all the time. It's more interesting if it's of other people. But that being said, audio is better than nothing. Absolutely. And again, for any reason, no matter who you are, you can schedule time with me down there. First interview, I'm gonna ask you a lot of questions about your life, get an understanding of who you are, that kind of thing, okay? And then after that, towards the end of the interview or in videos after the fact, then we can talk about specific subjects or anything you want, all right? See you next time, guys. Ciao.